Hello, this video is in regards to fixing the BD-125, the Venom-125, the Boom-125, the Vader-125. There's a few names to this bike, but this will also work on any 125cc Chinese motorcycle. It actually will pretty much work on all of them because they all have the same charging system. The reason I need to record this, and don't mind the video of me riding at night this is just uh i could just narrate over that so you guys not looking at my face while i'm trying to explain to you why i'm recording this before it gets to the first video it was because this video was a good learning experience for me when i start fixing the stator on the bd125 i found out that the stator was not the problem but the reason that I kept this video the way it is, is because it still teaches you guys how to fix the stator and diagnose the stator if the stator is the problem. The first time I tested the stator, I had to delete it. So it's not even in this video. That's why when you, when I told like you'll watch the video, I'll show you how to test the stator and just jump to replacing the stator. The way to test the stator is to bench test it and it's toward the end of the video it's pretty much the last t like set of video at the end so if you want to know how to test the stator that's how you do it you should take out the stator from the bike itself and you can do a bench test on it so what actually happened was that i thought that was the stator that was the problem but it turns out to be the regulator the connection in the regulators not even the regulator the regulator was fine the connection in the regulator was broken or it was bent because the person who were putting it together in the Chinese factory that they were assembling, I guess they were very, they were doing it really fast. There was no quality control for them. So um, they just push out this, um, this bike by just pushing the connector in. They were trying to get it out the door and it bent the connector. It, it was not connecting. I think the, the thing that you guys need to also remember before we start the video is that in these bike, green mean ground. So just remember that if you're trying to test any wire, remember that the green wire usually mean ground. All right, and especially in the charging system. All right, guys, let's go back to the video. All right, guys. Some of you might have some problem with your BD-125 or your Venom one X20 Boom Vader 125. A lot of times these bikes come and the charging system is um, broken. And I haven't found any video on it online and stuff like that. I guess people just figure that it would be super easy to fix and they don't need to make a video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to diagnose this Vader 125 um and figure out if the the charging system is broken or not the first thing that you want to do is you want to take off the cover get a voltmeter so here any other type of motorcycle um and then you your battery constantly dying um and it's not because you you keep cranking and you you will take a this for a ride for like 10 20 minutes to see if it would charge up the battery and it didn't charge up the battery um I'm going to show you how to test it. So you want to charge up the battery completely first so it would start and um, and then what you want to do. So ideally you want to be able to hold these leads, but I'm, I have one hand holding the camera. So you're going to get the voltage from the, the battery um, and you want to record that voltage um, and then you want to kind of turn on the key and you also want to report. Um, record the voltage. I already test this, so I already know that the charging system is, you know, the problem. So you want to start the, you know, the the bike. So you're going to get this. So it's 12.34, and then now you're going to to crank crank the engine, right? And notice notice that the voltage actually dropped because it's using the battery voltage to um, to power the bike. The, the starter and the, the the headlights and the instrument cluster so what you want to do is you want to kind of rev it a little bit and hold the rpm we're going to go a little bit higher and notice that it didn't change at all see i'm going to let go i'm going to go higher and i'm going to go rev to 4000 it actually went down so i'm going to turn this off it's telling me is that the alternator 
didn't take over. So it could be the alternator's fault or it could be the regulator's fault, but most likely it's probably the alternator. So that's how you kind of diagnose that it's the charging system because the alternator is not even charging the battery at all. It's just running off the battery and you don't want that to happen because you don't want to be get stuck somewhere. The alternator is right here. I'll show you where it is. It's right here. But then you have to get to the wiring and all these things. It's, it's not maybe like a faulty ground or, or the wiring or something. So take off this panel and I'll, I'll come back. So after you take out the panel, I'll show you where the, this is where the alternator is being housed inside here. To get to it, you have to take out the bolt. But before you do that, you want to test out the alternator first to make sure that the alternator is not the one that's broken. And this is also the, the sending unit. So that two thing could be, could be broken with your, with your um, charging system. It could be this or it could be this, or it could just be the wiring in between. The, the part to replace it is really, really cheap. It's not like most sport bikes. The, the nice thing about buying these Chinese bike, even though it breaks a lot, it's dirt cheap to fix them. And like to replace this, if you want to get the OEM from the manufacturer, it will be 50 bucks plus like including the shipping. But if you want to get it from Amazon, Stator would work on it as well. And I'll show you how to test it. You don't you see these zip ties right here. You could cut them, and in, in order to replace them, you do need to cut them. But if you just want to test out if the alternator is broken, you just kind of follow this, this wire from here, and then it, you just kind of follow it over there. Uh, what I look for in here is um, this, this, it would be four prong, right? It would be four prong, it has two yellow on, in the top. So um, you want to disconnect that, and I'll show you um, what to do. Unplug this. I decided to cut this for this video because it's really hard for me to take the video um, and you know kind of work from inside there but you guys don't have to cut it yet if you're just trying to test it out. Um, it's good to buy some zip ties to together after you replace it or after you test it. So what you're gonna do is you can see these wires right so you have the yellow and then you have the the green. Let's take off these panel. It, it should take four bolts. One, two, three and then four in the back and they they use um eight mil so to, after taking out the bolts just remember the order it goes into or you can just kind of put it in so when you're working on it you don't remember you don't forget once you take this out so the longest one goes into the very bottom left right and then the second longest one goes right here right right next to the chain and then these two these two ones that are similar they go and those are the two short it when it goes over there. So the best part about these type of motorcycle, um, these Chinese motorcycle, even though they kind of break quite a bit, um, it's very, very easy to replace them, right? Um, the, the parts are very sh dirt cheap, and if you're trying to replace the Seder on the Yamaha R3 that I have over there, it would cost maybe like $200 for just parts. Um, or $150 for just the stator. So this is actually, um, you go to the OEM, you can go to Chronic Racing, which is where I bought this, or you can go to um, Venom Motorsport and buy the OEM um, stator, which is gonna cost you 50 at um, Chronic, plus the shipping, including the shipping. It would cost you even more than that at Venom. Go to Amazon, this is $13 at Amazon from the time I made this video. Now, some people have said that some Amazon things like this, it, it comes broken, you know, because, you know, these are Chinese made um, PGY6, um, uh, PY6 um, stator. Try it and you put this in and it doesn't work, don't be discouraged, right? Um, return it because Amazon has free return and then get a new one. So you wanna make sure that when you put it in, the wires do line up, so all the links for all the parts, zip ties, lock tight, everything is going to be in, um, in the description, including this. But what you want to do is you want to take these bolts out, right? these two bolts out, you want to take this out, and you want to take that out. So when it comes on it, the thing in the middle right here is that unit right here, right? And um, so you just want to make sure that you put in everything back the, the same way it comes. All right, guys, I put this in. What I tend to, what I came to the decision was to put this on top because I was comparing it with that one and how that's what oriented. And I should compare all the wire. Make sure that when you, um, when you put it together, this is a five prong, but it should work. You just kind of let this kind of go away. But like, um, see, like 
the the yellow is now on the bottom and it doesn't have what i also noticed is that when i was taking it off it was so hard to take out because they use red loctite do you need to use red loctite no just use a blue loctite and that should also do the job see how it goes it kind of happens with um with some of these bikes if your if your bike is not charging um, and I just went through the whole thing to replace the stator and I replaced it and I tested I bench but then what I did was I also bench test the old stator and it's still not charging so I was like what is going on what you want to do is go to the voltage re regulator right and then you want to measure the ground and what and when, when I did the ground so I, I put a, a prong a resistance prong into the green and I touched this and that should give you um, like a, a reading of a very low reading or you can touch it to this, this um, black battery terminal. And you, that should also give you a ground. So I'm not getting any reading. So that's what sh something you should do before you, you change the whole alternator and, and whatnot or the stator. And what I did was I looked at this jack and look at it. Look at how bent it is. Oh my gosh. That's the, the reason it was not getting charged is because of that. Oh, that was that would be so simple. I might change out this into the old one, but this new one is fine. But, I'll, you know, like, oh, my gosh. So I want to show you it's it's running. You can hear the sound. I disconnect the battery. So it, now it's running off of the alternator that I just put on. I, I'm going to just shut it down because I'm inside the garage. But um, this is the this is the new and you when it's flickering like that, you know it's running off the alternator because alternator is not very um, stable when it when it runs. So, boom! It was the voltage regulator, um, but at least now you know what to do when you need to replace the stator. But if your your bike is not charging, check these pins. These pins. This this one was the regulator. So you just trace this. It's not charging. Trace this and go back to the, this. And if you disconnect this and check if the pins are straight, you can also check these pins as well to make sure that they are straight, which is the um, alternator pin um, or the, the, the stator pin. When you use this, uh, this, is an, this is a DC system, but I'm using an AC alternator and that works as well. I'll show the, if you need a new alternator, I'll put it in the link. Don't buy the OEM one, which is gonna cost you $50. Prong, and you just need to make sure that the prong is in the right order, yellow, white which is going to be what it came with blue which is the pickup right and then like you need to pull when it come originally it's going to come with red on this you just need to pull that red out and then put in the green all right like the the green will be all by itself you just need to solder the green onto this prong and it should also work if you need to replace the alternator now i'm going to put the oem one as you can see this one actually worked so if you need to replace the stator if the stator is broken you could use this one the link will be below but i'm going to show you how to rewire it so because it, when you come what it's come with is this red wire it's going to be where the green wire is currently which is what i i kind of did i um i didn't solder it i just want to make sure that it works but you know i and so you see where that green wire is i just kind of shove it in there you should solder it and i just put um, hot glue in there not because i want it to be permanent it's because i wanted it to, to test it to make sure that it works. So when I make this video, I'll give you the best information. So this will work. This setup will work. This is an, an AC stator, but the only difference between an AC and a DC stator, and the, the system is a DC system, is that this red wire, or this right here is called a uh, pickup coil. It doesn't matter which orientation it is, but I would, I would recommend you put it this way because the wire can reach it a little bit better. Um, and you know, so, so this is called the, the excitant wire um, or coil where, and then this red wire would be an exciting coil um, wire where it, it would use in like a DC, an AC system for the spark and stuff like that. But this is a, a DC system. So the spark is being done um, by the CDI and the voltage like regulator. So it does not, you don't need to worry about that. I'll show you real quick how to test. This is, um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to, I'm gonna test this. This this is probably just gonna be spare how to test it. So with with voltmeter, with two yellow, you wanna put a voltmeter between um not a voltmeter, an ohmmeter, and put it to and make sure that they have solid connection, right? 
um, and then you can have like a little bit of voltage or, or resistance, but not too much. You don't want it to be like 15 ohms resistance. That's too much. But if it's like one to five ohm or underneath under one ohm, you know, it's good, good. And this, this is the OEM one, by the way, um, to test, to test this also the blue wire is, it goes to this, this is the pickup um coil so what you what you want to do is you want to put a an ohmmeter here and you want to put an ohmmeter where the the connector is right here right here not not up here right here um the ground the the metal piece right here where my finger is don't put it right there put it right here and you should get like around 130 ohms that's kind of normal right what else do you need to to do you want to make sure that th this green is ground and you want to test the ground to make sure you connect here and you connect here and it should be a very low resistance we're, we're talking about like under one resistance because it should be a continuous um, connection so if, if that is okay then you can kind of move on to connect ground and then you want to test between the green and you want to connect one of it at, at a time and it should be it should be no resist it should be like infinite resistance so it should be like an L you know, because it should not have a, a clear connection between these these three prong and the and the and the green, and that's how you test it, right? That's how you test this, and that's that's how you can bench test this. Let you guys know that use Loctite. I know I, I said it earlier when you when you're doing these bolts, because they they have red Loctite on it when I took it out, and you want to put blue um, blue Loctite back or red if you have it, but blue should do. You don't want it to back out. And if it back out while it vibrating, could damage gear and stuff like that. Also put Loctite on when you put these bolts back in. But before you do that, you want to put this in. Um, I would Loctite them and then you would kind of connect it in. And then you kind of just screw it in without Loctiting. That's how I kind of test it. And then um, test the bike that it, it works and it's charging the battery. And it's charging the, car, the, the bike. And the best way to do that is to put a voltmeter onto the battery and see if it's like over like 12.6 to like 14. Um, if you rev it, the, 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 um, the voltage should go up or you could just unplug the battery and it should run off of this by itself. And the, and you know, like that's how you know that this is working. Um, so yeah, be sure to leave a like and thumbs up. Um, I don't make any money off of these video. This is just to help you guys, you know, so if you, you like the video, we'll, help with the algorithm so other people who have this exact same problem can also find a fix as well so that's why i'm like give a thumb up because it helps other people it doesn't help me all right i don't make money off of this, these videos all right bye bye thank you for watching guys and i hope this will help you um this video took forever because i was diagnosing this problem all day um so it's definitely a very good learning experience and I hope you learn as much as I did and I hope that this video helped you with your problem. Please like and subscribe. Bye bye now.